Hello, welcome everyone to The Distraction here on Fightful.com. It is Tuesday. It is Movie Review Tuesday. You may notice if you're watching on the live stream, that's not live. We have a new set, new graphics. I go away, I come back, and they bless us with a new set. I am Jeremy Lambert, joined as always by the big dick Joe Holbert. Joe, how are you? <laughs> oh, I am. Um, how is your oh, dick a- is what I meant to ask. I am alarmed. I now understand that was a reference, but at first I was very, very confused. Um, I'm very angry, and you know this, and this is going to be a tumultuous episode of The Distraction, folks, because, um, well, I'm, look, I made it clear to Jeremy last week. I was frustrated with his choice here. I didn't realize the evil he had put me in for. This was worse than I remembered it being. I'm excited to see how he's going to explain to me it was good. Please continue. I will explain to you that this okay. was a good film because it okay. was a good film uh we watched baywatch this past week i think we actually both just watched it today (laughs) but we watched baywatch starring the rock uh real quickly tuesday movie review tuesday we review wrestlers wrestlers movie starring wrestlers uh past reviews have included the hulk hogan trilogy the the holy trilogy of suburban commando mr nanny and and no holds barred uh john cena films batista films this is our first foray into the legend Dwayne the rock johnson and his movies uh and we went with baywatch from 2017 i went with baywatch look i immediately regretted this one when i saw the runtime and then like 30 it was like 36 minutes into this movie and i felt like they had done every single bit they could possibly do and then I yeah. checked the time. I was like, there's still an hour and 20 minutes left yes. of this movie. Like, how much more can they do? Uh, and then it kept going, and they kept doing yeah. similar bits, and yeah. then it then it ended, <laughs> Joe. Yeah. But this movie, was it still ruled. I don't care what you say. It still ruled. And I will tell you why after you tell me that it was apparently bad. Oh, I'm going to go further than that. This is the worst film we have covered. Oh, my gosh. No, this is not. I, I, this hang is, on. Okay, hang fine, on. fine. I have the floor now. I will fine. let you. After this, I will not speak. You you can just go after this. Okay? You should have done, to you should have done the Skip all, all. Bayless. You should have done the Skip. Yes. It's my turn. My turn. <laughs> I wish I had notes. I need to start having notes and slam on the, uh, on the desk. Look, this is the worst film we've covered for many reasons. But... While it is not the actual worst film, it is the worst film we've covered because there is not even a charm to this, man. This isn't like some dumb WWE Studios film that everyone knows sucks. Like, this is just terrible. It's so bad. I have, I have watched this film multiple times, and I still don't know if it's supposed to be like a self-parody or like an action summer action film. Or a comedy that's supposed to be funny. If it is, wow, <laughs> missed huge on the last one. Okay, I have no idea. It's it's just terrible. And the fact that there's actual like um, there's actual backing behind this, and some people that are talented supposedly anyway, makes it much worse than anything. Before. Marine Six, yeah, terrible film, dude. It's a, it's a film Miz and Shawn Michaels are the leads. <laughs> we knew it was gonna suck. That's what. This is just bad. This is actually bad, and it didn't intend to be, as far as I know. Now I will send it back to you, and you can take the show home. <laughs> <laughs> I think it it is self aware. I, okay. I fully think this is a self aware film. Look, The Rock especially. I think The Rock is is totally self aware of what's going on, and that this isn't. I think he's joked about it on Twitter. Like, oh yeah, you're the one good. You're the one good review of, of Baywatch. Uh, he's gonna look when I send him this the this link yes. and he watches it. He will 100% watch it because The Rock watches every. Of course, of course, The Rock watches the distraction. He's gonna send me the tweet. Keep killing it, JL. You know you gotta set JH straight. Don't know what's wrong with him. Good job, bro. And then signs off with the Wayne, whatever he signs off with. Um, but we're gonna get that tweet and it's gonna be a banner day for me here on the distraction. I think yeah. The Rock is self-aware. He's making the joke. He's calling Zac Efron Bieber and high school. Joseph, did yes. you know Zac Efron was in high school? Did you get that it. reference? What a joke it was, right? Wow. What a, what a, yeah, that was, yeah, I got it. It was good. Very good. There was also Zac Efron is looking at his phone, and it says, like, rock bottom. He's hit rock bottom. And I was like, ah, I see I what you guys yeah. did. Oh, layers, um, Joseph. You got to pay attention. It. I missed it. <laughs> Happens on me all the time, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah, look, I, I look. 
you're right. There are definitely scenes in this film that were self-aware. However, there are long stretches of the film where it is just like a... I don't even know how to explain what this is because there's no jokes in many like <laughs> long portions of the film. Am I missing something? There was definitely half an hour of this film where there was not one humorous moment whatsoever. And it was just like, let's stop this drug cartel deal. Sure, let's do that. Cool, whatever, man. But do I laugh ever when you're doing this or do I just watch bad action scenes, terrible CGI? I don't know. You tell me. Uh, did you ever watch the television series Baywatch? No. No, and that may be the reason why this is less fun. <laughs> if you did, I'm sorry. I'm glad you you got something out of this. But for me, big miss. It was it was similar in like the over the top, uh, just like, cause all right, they're lifeguards, but then they're doing drug busts and going undercover yes. and things like that. And it's like I'm pretty sure lifeguards don't actually do this mm-hmm. stuff. Maybe I'm wrong. I've never been in the lifeguard program. <laughs> I think, but you know what, Joe? I think I can make it in the lifeguard program because they held this uh, training thing. They got a bunch of attendees to this training. Yes. And one person makes it. She's actually very good at being a lifeguard. So she makes it, yep. and, and that's that's good. Zach Efron makes it, and he screws up everything. I don't know how this guy becomes a lifeguard part of Baywatch when he almost kills people and yet yes. somehow he makes the team and then the third guy Joe this was the best one do you know yeah. why the, this guy made the team for three reasons this is all you need to be a lifeguard folks this is it CPR training swimming skills rescue yep. skills all that you don't need any of that stuff none of it here's what you need folks heart no quit, and you gotta leave it all on the beach. So all, basically, all the same thing. Is what you're telling me. If three things, all the same thing. Like if, like if I had turned up and just been like, "I'm ready, throw me in," it'd, it'd gone. Yep, yeah, got it. This guy's ready. I, look, I uh, that that poor. What was that character's name? Uh, the, the gentleman uh, who Ronnie, made him because Ronnie, those, Ronnie. Him and and the, the female that got in, the woman that got in were. Like Alexandra Daddario, her her name is Summer in the film. Her character was literally just yeah, she's good at the job. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's all you got. But when you were laying out the deal about um, you know, obviously there is humor in the fact that these lifeguards, like they do these actual important ordeals um, beyond just saving people, which is important in its own right. To be clear, if anyone's watching this that is a lifeguard, I apologize. I did not mean that's not your profession. <laughs> However, I do not. I disagree. I think if you're a lifeguard and you're only saving people from drowning, you're not Cowards. doing enough. You've got to be going undercover and stopping drug. But what are you really doing as a lifeguard if you're only True. doing your job? True. So are we are we saying that Efron's character was there to create that dynamic of he's like the audience saying like, what are you? What is wrong with you guys? Just get the police. Is that what we're saying? That was the point of that character. He's like the uh, the the logical element and he ends up being totally wrong of course because Dwayne's instincts are just their next level <laughs> but is that what we're saying is he like does he represent us in that sense like why are you even getting involved in this you are lifeguards yeah he's not he's not good at his job he is the guy who just shows up uh to this training he just think he lost a bet and he's like yeah go out there try to be a lifeguard he's not good at it doesn't know what he's doing he's trying to kill people and then he realizes th- this is all more than lifeguarding. You know, why are yes. you guys doing this? So you don't have to do any of this stuff. The, Zac Efron, despite his his apparent good looks, I'm sure some people find him attractive. Zac Efron is just a normal guy in this film. You take away the good looks, he's just like you and I, Joseph. I thought he was like an Olympic <laughs> swimmer. Did I miss? Did we watch different films? <laughs> Wasn't he like an Olympian with gold medals and yeah, stuff? Yeah, he threw and he got... up in the pool. He threw up in yeah. the pool. He's flawed, is your point? Yeah. You know, okay. So, <laughs> to me, he was the only character in this that had enough backstory that I couldn't just be like, yeah, he's me. Whatever. Sure. I mean, <laughs> sure, he's me. He might as well be. He's got the same amount of interest in this. But he, I, look, um, he's he's us with with better looks. Um, yeah. at least better looks than me. He he's us with better looks and an Olympic swimming background. You take away those things yeah. though, Joe, yeah. and there's no difference. <laughs> just that small little, yeah. little two gold medals. In the <laughs> you take them away, same guy. Um. Sure, man. Look, I want to believe. I want to be with you on this self-aware deal. <laughs> but I think here's actually what I think. Based on the way The Rock delivered a lot of his lines in this, 
I think the intention was to make that film you just described that's self-aware and it's like, how wacky was that TV show? Let's, you know, do it and make a load of money off idiots. Um, <laughs> and here they are. They've done that very well. I wonder if that plan was kind of um, altered in post because there are elements of this film where there is just not a hint of humour. And there's other times when the villains are being humorous with their own kind of buffoonery, I was like, oh, it's definitely self-parody. But then they would just be beating people up. Like, what about the scene where the rock's fighting the, the bad guy and he picks up, like, a kid's photo and he's like, hey, man, have some standards. And they just keep fighting. I don't understand <laughs> what the point of any of that was. I don't... Joseph, I don't jo- what, what do you Who know? Is this no, for? look, look, this is easily explainable right here. No. You, you say... No. <laughs> you say have some standards, but then they keep fighting. This is all WWE, Joe. That's all this yeah. is. You know, they say, oh, safety precautions and mask and all this stuff and, and positive tests. But we're still going to keep running our shows. You know, we, we got to think we have to do this. The Rock can say, you know, there's kids have some standards. But at the end of the day, he's got to beat this guy up. Yeah. That's what this is all about. Was we supposed to like The Rock in this film? I, I don't care what The Rock does. I would find him just charming and the greatest human being alive. So even if we weren't supposed to like The Rock, I, I love The Rock in this film. It's not my question. I refuse your answer. Okay. <laughs> I, for much of this film, you said that I, you know, we are Zac Efron, which is a sentence I never <laughs> thought I would be repeating on this show. But here we go. I will say that I spent most of the film being like, Efron's got this nailed on. He's so right, man. Like, look, true, maybe he's proven wrong in the end, but let's be honest, for the most part, he's dead set and he's correct on this. Why are we breaking in and examining corpse and shit for, just, for this? We're lifeguards. What are we doing here? I mean, that is an insane scene, dude. That is, for, just for some cheap laughs, that is insane. And, it, and you get some serious imagery out of that that I did not need <laughs> in an afternoon film viewing, may I say. Do not watch this one with family, folks. I want to make it clear now. I make it clear every week. Not this one. Never. <laughs> you didn't like the scrotum and taint mm. viewing? <laughs> no. I didn't. <laughs> scene, I was, didn't need it. It was very similar to uh, the Bad Boys 2 scene. I don't know if you, you've seen that no. movie. Um, You're not reviewing that one. <laughs> there's, there's no wrestlers. I was wondering if I could tie it into wrestling, but no. uh, the only link I have there is Joe Pantaleone is the boss, and he was in Ready to Rumble, and so okay. that's that's the closest okay. connection I can get on that one. Ready to Rumble, by the way, a much better film than this. Dead serious. Oh, Will Ready to argue. Rumble is one of my favorite films it's... of all time. So. Okay, hey, look, this, this won't run it in a little bit, but I'll accept that rather than debating if it's better than day one. Fine. What was we talking about? Scrotum? Is that what we were talking yeah, about? Yeah, we are talking about Very bad scrotums. scene. Very strange scene. Didn't know I was supposed to feel about it. Continue. Uh, that was an odd scene. Again, again, 36 minutes into this movie, they had done all the dick jokes and the ball yes. jokes, and then they just like mm-hmm. kept going with it. And it was like, okay... You, do you have anything else to offer? And it turns out they don't. But uh... hang, on, hang on, Joe is what you're calling these <laughs> things. So this list of a couple of them, and I will not go into detail <laughs> on one in particular. But there is one that is literally just the rock being like, like one of the characters says, "Rock, big dick." He's like, "Yeah, big dick." <laughs> That's the joke. That's the whole joke. Unless I'm saying, I'm pretty sure that was the whole joke, wasn't it? Do you think? It was. That was it. I, maybe I missed stuff. I don't know. But I look. Dwayne, Dwayne said big dick. The other guy said big dick. They laughed. I was supposed to laugh. I don't know. But but I tried my best with this. I didn't understand what was going on. And then the other, the poor kid that you mentioned before that got in on heart, he has a whole scene of physical comedy about his dick. That's not funny either. This was terrible. Oh, look, I didn't mean to break you like this, Jerry, but I've got, I just have to ask questions. The audience wants to know. I hope none of them watched along with us, but if they did, they want to know the answers to these questions. Uh, you didn't find the big dick. It was so. <laughs> look, I don't know. I don't know. I must have oh missed the God. detail to it, but it, to me, it was just straight big dick talk, and that for me. <laughs> That for me, there was only so much I could laugh at. It. And it was in like two minutes in the film. Two minutes in, straight <laughs> It was. The Rock, like, I knew this movie was going to be great. And it was. This was. <laughs> I'm done. 
Okay, okay. I shouldn't have gone to the dick stuff. I? I'm, I'm setting us up on terrible stuff. I'm very sorry, everyone. I don't know where we're going from But Jeremy, when he recuperates, he will tell you what I missed, man. And I will not repeat because I don't want to break him again. But there is a, there is a lot of dick jokes. Are you ready, Jeremy? You ready to explain this? Because I, I don't know. Okay. I knew this film would be great when the opening scene is like just the rock diving in. This person has like a head wound. They're just bleeding yes. everywhere. And the rock dives in, saves him, and then out pops the Baywatch a title from the yes. ocean. And it's like this movie is going to be completely absurd. You could tell yes. that from just that. And it was. And the pig dick thing. The rock is just running the beach. And yes. everyone's like, oh yeah, he saved my grandmother. He saved my son and all. They're just reminiscing about how great the rock is. And literally, the person is just like, hey, big dick. He's got a big dick. <laughs> It has no point of being in the film where they put it in there. <laughs> no, I, I, I agree that's funny, but is you know is a singular bit not so funny. But you're look, you're right. They lean on the dick stuff. A lot, okay, they lean on the dick stuff a lot. As I said, I will not be describing the physical comedy bit that takes place later on in the film. By later, I mean about four minutes. About four minutes later, we go back to the dick. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I've been cut off again. This this is this is going to a dangerous path, folks. Please bear with us. This is bear, we're professionals. We'll get through it, but we need to get through this slowly and guide each other through it. Okay. I had, to, I had to mute my mic while I coughed. Yes, I saw. <laughs> <laughs> at least now you can see me so when i did point yes. that I, okay. you got it so the scene joseph is talking about we have yes. ronnie who is just yes. this this geeky kid but he's got a lot of heart it's like Le mickey wald all heart no talent right <laughs> leaves it all yeah. on the beach yes and he's got a crush on uh, CJ CJ Parker, who used to be played by Pamela Anderson, now played by, uh, I think her name's <laughs> Kelly Rohrbach. Uh, she's a model. And he's choking, he's coughing on the beach. She comes over to save him, gives him the Heimlich, rubbing up against him. Yes. Ronnie gets a boner from this. Yes. And once he's, he's released... Uh, you know, his friend points out that he has the boner. Yes. And, you know, he can't walk or anything with that. He doesn't want her to see it. Doesn't want her to know what's going on. So he jumps. <laughs> he goes down on a chair. Yes. And his dick gets stuck in the chair. Yes. He, like, <laughs> flare flops. Yeah. Right? He flare flops into the chair and his dick gets stuck. And they yes. this is a full scene for like fifteen minutes of the rock. Like it, yeah. <laughs> the rock comes over and is like, Your dick is stuck, bro. <laughs> and this just goes on. And I have no idea what the point of this whole scene is, except for that this lady is very attractive and if she's near you, you're probably gonna yes. get a boner, which is understandable, but I don't know why this man needed to get his dick stuck in a chair to explain this. Yes, and it's like, I mean, God bless him, but of all the ways to handle it, just diving face first. Don't know, like, why? What are you doing, man? Why? What? I, yeah, look, I'm with you. There's, um, oh, yeah, this is this is something else. I can't believe we're even going down it. But you're right, it goes on. It's like the scene in, in Something About Mary where the zipper, that whole yes. I don't know if you've seen that, but like you know where everyone has a different reaction to it? It's like that, but imagine there's no humour to it at all. <laughs> and instead it's just them like constructively trying to figure out how to remove him from this predicament. And that's like that's all the comedy is just the physical bit itself. I can't remember how graphic they got with the image. I can't remember. It may have been deleted from the memory when we got to the scrotum later. <laughs> I don't know. But I'll reiterate, not a family flick. Gonna make it clear again. Not a family flick. Carry on. I mean, he had a boner. I don't know if it was his actual boner or if it was a prosthetic boner, okay. but it was there. Talk, huh? <laughs> I want to go back to The Rock's big dick because okay. for a long, long time, we've wondered about the size of Batista's dick. Yes. Do you think this was thrown in as a shot at Batista? 
Mate, no, I don't. But what I will <laughs> say is, if this was made within the last two months, I would say yes, because I famously said that Batista is a better actor than Dwayne The Rock Johnson. So that would make a more... Because they're on to us, man. They know what we're doing here. So, But I want to just, by the way, while you bring him up, I'm doubling down. I don't care how many box office hits Dwayne has had. I'm taking David Batista. I don't care. Are you, you can throw a skyscraper, Tooth Fairy, Jumanji, or you can throw all this awful filmmaking at me. <laughs> Including Baywatch, which is almost the worst I've seen. Is the worst I've seen. It's great. That. I will take Dave and his friend Stu slash Guardians of the Galaxy. I'll also include his role in the James Bond fleet in which he doesn't say a word as being a better performance than Dwayne's peak. Listen, this is not my fault. It's Jeremy's for giving us the wrong film to, to rate Dwayne on. But I am going with Dave. I'm glad you brought it up to remind me of that. Uh, I don't think The Rock is like an actual good actor. The Rock is very good at what he does. I'll say that. Uh, he's, he's not going to win an Oscar. I would be shocked if this man ever wins an Oscar. <laughs> Maybe I'll be wrong. Uh, but The Rock is very good in roles like this. Is this good acting? I think he actually won like a Razzie or something for for his performance in this or this entire movie won a Razzie. Um, but he's still very good in in this role. Does that mean he's good? According to Joseph, no. But he's very good in this role. Well, look, I'll say this: he's not got that deal of um, almost every wrestler we've covered on this show. No matter how good or bad they are, they have like a few moments where you realise they are not actors. You know, their their delivery will just miss, and you think, "My God, that was the best take of that." Not not great. He doesn't have them moments. He just he appears in such just terrible films. <laughs> like it, what will happen with him is he's inevitably going to take on a demanding role at some point in the next decade, and like he'll be good in it, and everyone will be like, "There you go, that's it. A cemented rock in history. He wasn't a good actor after all, right?" But the issue is, at this point, that has not yet happened, Jeremy. So we have to just look at what he's done. And while I would say he's probably the best actor of the professional wrestlers in skill, <laughs> that does not give him the top rank for me because I have yet to watch any of his films and for anything but, my God, when does this end? Which, by the way, you mentioned the 36 minutes. <laughs> I checked the timer on this. This was hell. This was the worst. This was terrible. I, I hated it. Sorry, Dwayne. I keep killing it, JH. I love Titan Games. I'm a fan of it now. I don't have mentioned that show. Big Titan Games guy. This step too far. I'm sorry. Have you have you watched Southland Tales? The Rock's in that. That's probably oh. like his most his rangiest film. Okay. Does he do a rock bottom in it? <laughs> I, I watched it when it first came out, and this is one of his first roles too. Like Justin Timberlake and Mandy Moore okay. are also in this film, so you know, okay. high level actors and actors. And Mandy Moore's actually become like a good actress. Um, but this, this is one of his first like like film roles, and yeah, this is probably like his his range. The Rock has hit such like a comfort point to where like he could yes. just play The Rock and make millions and he's like i'm good doing that why do i need to prove that i'm like leonardo dicaprio or something i'm just gonna be the rock collect my millions and it's that's fine. it yeah. yeah i mean I, my question would be is the rock's most impressive acting performance slash out of his comfort zone moment when Carrie he played triple the, h <laughs> no i was not gonna go there but that is also a good suggestion when he did like the full hollywood hill bit in the World Wrestling Federation, is that actually his best acting performance ever? The rest is probably easier for him than that was, which says a lot about his 20 <laughs> years in Hollywood. I must say, it really does. I think The Rock's best acting bit is legitimately carrying Triple H. That that had to be tough. Oh. That had to be wow. very tough to, to make people... He made Triple H a star. Like yes. it, The Rock does not get enough credit. People like Foley and all that. No, no, no. The Rock did all of that. That was his biggest acting accomplishment. Rock was an interesting top guy in that, like he, like he never had the. Um, he obviously he was the absolute top guy when Austin was out, but he never had like the title run that Austin did, where it was like McMahon just couldn't get the belt off him. You know, like those deals. It felt like he. Lo I mean, I still to this day can't believe that he didn't win at WrestleMania, sixteen, right with the four corners and the yeah. Triple H and all that. I don't know what... The, I guess he was just one of those guys he didn't need to win because he was The Rock and he was going to sell his catchphrases. But he is interested in that sense. He's interested in general, to be honest, Jeremy, because his career is actually tiny, isn't it? As an actual wrestler, it's a very short career. I mean, he's what? He's tripled it now in Hollywood? He 
must have been in Hollywood way longer than he was in professional wrestling for that first run. Yes. I mean, we, Easily, right? We discussed this off air, and maybe we've talked about it on the actual our Thursday show, but like, look at how this business has changed from uh from like 1996 to 2000. Yeah. You know, 1996 Hogan turns all this stuff. I get really 2001. 2001 WCW is out of business. Like that's mm-hmm. a five year gap. What yes. has changed? And like that's like the Rock's run right there. I know it extended a little bit past that, but, but that's he, it. Yeah. yeah, like um. You know, what has changed in WWE from 2015 to 2020? It feels like the same show every single week. It is wild, yeah. Like, to think that in that time, like, if you just miss that time wrestling, you miss Rock's whole rise. Time as a top guy, and then he just leaves. Like, and in, you know, now the, um, when did AJ Styles come? I guess that was like 2016. 2016. I mean, is that the only massive change? I guess Drew. Yeah, stuff changes, but you're right. The point stands. The, the industry as a whole, while things are a lot of fun when you're in them, the way they change, in the grand scheme of things, like the whole business changed in that little five year period. I mean, even Austin, if you pick up Austin, if you leave yeah, Austin's story Austin's in like the summer, yeah, the summer of like 96, if you just, if you stop watching wrestling there and you come back at the end of 2001, it's like, I, you just have no idea what happened with Steve Austin. Yeah. He was a fun mid card guy. Like, yeah, you're, you're right. It's, it's pretty wild, but. You know, it was good it happened for Dwayne because now we get to review just masterpieces like this. You know, like, I mean, I'm with you. I want to co-sign what you said. I want to make it clear. I support anyone in their ability to make money doing terrible work. I really <laughs> do, and I'm happy for Dwayne that he is such a commodity that him on the on the poster is enough that he can make terrible films like this, and they will, I assume, do well commercially, I would guess. Critically, I'm aware it did not do this so This movie well, did $177 million. At the box office, I feel like that the budget was sixty-five million, so that's yeah. pretty good. Okay, now on, so where I mean, I'm not really. Um, I guess budget-wise, that isn't like insane anymore, right? Nowadays, that's like, a, I guess that's nothing now. I don't know. I'm an old man, but what I do know is the visuals in this film are some of the worst you'll ever see in a major motion picture. The scene with the bow on fire is insane. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a GTA cut scene in 2007. <laughs> it is insane. I have no idea what happened there. I don't think a lot of CGI looks good. Like, this was 2017. Oh, no. Like, even like, something like Game of Thrones. I'll watch that, and I'll just be like, mm-hmm. some of the CGI is just terrible. And, yeah. it was, you know, Game of Thrones is this big-budget television show and everything. I, I think the majority of CGI is just god-awful looking. I don't know if that's a hot take or not. I'm not really involved in the dialogue, hashtag, to know whether or not that... I feel like that's a common take, but maybe you look a bit hipsterish. I don't know if you get any heat for that, Jeremy. I don't know. You might. I hope not. I wish you well. But here's what I will say. <laughs> you uh, you forgot earlier the detail. I had to remind you about Mr. Efron's character being a... Like, I think they described him at one point as one of the greatest swimmers in the world, is what they say, I think, at one point. Individually, yes. Yes. In, oh, hey... That team speech that Rock gives him <laughs> straight out of Titan Games. Let me tell you, that's that's just the Rock talking. There's no there's no script there. But did I I may have missed. I feel like that was not reutilized in the film. The idea that they had one of the greatest swimmers in the world on their team was it was it emphasized in the action scenes? Because I definitely checked out at some point. So tell me if it was. But well, I feel like he was just another guy on the team for the most part. <laughs> Whenever he tried to save people, I mean, he could swim, but like everyone could swim i the the one scene yeah. where he tries to save the lady and she's like back elbowing him in the water and everything and he just gets completely thrown off it wasn't utilized that he's just the great swimmer bit was how he essentially got on to the baywatch yeah. team because without that he's just some rebel kid who doesn't actually know what he's doing and screws mm-hmm. everything up but they're like great swimmer olympic swimmer got that potential but then you come to find out Baywatch apparently isn't about swimming. Like it doesn't really matter. Right. You got to have heart. You got to leave it all on the beach and you yeah. got to have no quit. True. That's what it's yeah, about. All those three things are, they are key <laughs> at the top of any resume for that, for that gig. But I, mean, I just, I don't know. I thought it was, could have been a detail. They stressed a little bit more. You know, I, I didn't know they had guys like come regularly. It was community service for him. Right. That's what he was explained as. Yeah. The guy. Yeah. Was, so I don't know. I mean, look, I don't know how much we spoke about this film at this point. Here's what I, I have a pitch, and I 
It's going to be simple about it. I'm going to be frank. I'm going to be upfront, direct. Imagine this film shot for shot the same, the exact same film. Take out Dwayne The Rock Johnson, insert Big Van Bobby Lashley. <laughs> Do you have a better film? Yes or no? All right, I'm going to go one further than this. Okay. And I tweeted this last night, I think. I don't. My memory's not very good. I've learned through the weeks we've done watching these movies, you could take out the lead character and the second, one of the seconds, we won't say all of them, and replace them with Triple H and Shawn Michaels, and it's the same film. Couldn't Triple H and Shawn Michaels do the same rebel this was all the dick humor this was degeneration x triple h and Shawn michaels right they could do this whole movie shot for shot the exact i'm not saying it'd be better i'm not saying it'd be worse okay. they could do this whole movie um no no i <laughs> i wouldn't have watched this i wouldn't have got through it i would i think you have wrongly moved to triple h what before pondering bob lashley in this film it's my suggestion here. And imagine if Leo Rush steps in at the Zac Efron role. Now we're talking, right? Big money? I don't... Big money, if you ask me. Look, I love Leo Rush. I don't know if he could have played the Zac Efron role. I, I don't know well, if I Leo that is like... I draw the line. He's not Bobby <laughs> Lashley, known, known speaker and personality. That's not here. Look, like, no, Bobby, Lashley, Rush, Bobby Lashley has been learning from The Miz. He's been going to acting classes Good. with The Miz. Right. <laughs> he's been on. He's been out gigging The Miz in uh, all of these, um, what do you call auditions. Uh, yes. So I have faith in Bobby Lashley. Leo, honestly, like it just feels too sophomoric for Leo Rush. That's where I'm drawing the line. It's like, I don't know if Leo is going to be like doing these scrotum jokes and, and, and whatnot. Yeah. That's where I I have trouble putting those again. Shawn Michaels, yeah, Shawn Michaels is, is doing, you know, he's making those Shawn Michaels faces of like, I, I don't know if that's Shawn Michaels' face, but he, you know you know what I'm talking about, Joe. He's doing that I stuff do, while I he's do. feeling the taint and the scrotum. Yeah. Oh, you reminded me of that scene again. Um, <laughs> can you can you break down for the audience what they were doing there? Because I think it's one of the most insane things no, I've ever heard. Watch it. No, you're not. You're watch, watch the movie. <laughs> okay. You, look, that's fine. I, I don't blame you for that. I just cannot believe that the comedic hijinks led them to just pulling a corpse out and being like, hey, touch his dick. <laughs> like, wow. Well, um, hey, guys, go for it. Sure. But just this was something, man. I, you know, last week, I'm going to pull back the curtain here. When did we talk about Baywatch last when you said you were getting... You were, this was last Tuesday, correct? Yes. I'm not missing... Yeah, those are the last okay, time sorry, we've the, actually talked to each other, despite yes, the, two shows airing in between. Yes, the tape WCW schedule messed me up a little bit, I'm going to be honest, okay? But uh, when we got off the air, I was like, dude, I've seen it. I was doing a bit. It is not that bad. It is fine. <laughs> it's just, you know, you're standard. This is that bad. This is terrible. This is not me doing a joke here. This this is just... It's just so... It's so, so bad. I, I couldn't... I couldn't wrap my head around it. So I just wanted to say that I am actually angry. Oh, that was not, that, last week, I was joking. Now, actually angry. But luckily, I'll get us on a better path next week, I promise, when we get there. I'm ready to do that. But, Carol? I enjoyed the, the finale of this film where The Rock yes. literally blew up this lady with a firework. That was parody. That felt like actual parody, didn't it? You know, the, whole, the way The Rock did all of that was like, and Efron was like, you just blew her up, and he's like, "Yeah." And I was like, <laughs> "Okay, that was fine," because he felt like they were in on how bad it was. Okay, yeah, I'm with you. That was fine. See, but that—that's proof that the whole movie was was parody and self-aware, in my opinion. I think it. So I think something happened. We're not going to get an interview with Dwayne or if, <laughs> or any of the people in this film. Uh, maybe might, the guy we... who had the heart. I don't know if he's a big star or not. Is he a big star? The fellow that had the heart and the desire and then never quit. Uh, I don't. I have no idea. Ronnie. He's on the show next week, guys. Just break it down. <laughs> okay, he's on. I'm getting him on next week. But I, I want to talk. So I sense this was supposed to be more comedic, and then they realised in post there was no funny jokes in it, and they was like, why don't we just make a serious action film? <laughs> sure, let's do that. Yeah, that's my take on this because I think perhaps the dick jokes hit more in planning as they did on this podcast than they did in reality. Because I, I want to make this clear. I hope no one that watches our show is like, man, this dick bit sounds hilarious. Just go check it out. <laughs> Don't do it. 
it is not funny. We found it funny because we both obviously got humour for it when watching it in preparation for a podcast. Do not watch it for actual humour. Not funny at all. So I don't know. I saying changed in my view. There was some weird tonal issues here. Hate to even use that kind of description for a film this bad, but that's what I would say. Tonal issues. Watch the first 30 minutes and then uh, you can check out after that because nothing really changes after the first 30 minutes. You get everything. They they yeah. do all their jokes and then they just they do the same jokes just with a different twist. Um <laughs> I, it was definitely, they were definitely self aware, especially The Rock. The, the Rock injected himself with the sea urchin so it could be. <laughs> look, I knew this bit would come back around because they're walking on the beach. And they're like, that's a sea urchin. You inject yourself with that, you get all hopped up on adrenaline, but then you die. It was like, somebody's gonna, that's gonna happen. Yes. And of course, The Rock did, and he survived because he's The Rock. But that that's why he shot, he shot her with <laughs> this bazooka. The, the other part that and then it turned into a big old fireworks explosion the other part where you could tell they were self-aware is like leading up to all this ronnie and, and cj parker are like they're somewhere i don't remember where that and they're like it's a red button we just press the red button and so they press yeah. the red button i don't know what the red button actually led to i think it set off the fireworks display but it was very clear that like there's no actual plan here this is just a parody yes. of an over-the-top action movie where you just press the red button yes because he was the joke was like he's the generic tech guy yeah right that was the yeah that was hilarious Great. um <laughs> I, that whole dynamic with those two i don't know if i just missed scenes I, it seemed to me that initially in the aforementioned dick scene i will not re, i'll not return to <laughs> with the with the with the seat and the wood and the god on my okay he was very, very nervous around around CJ, correct? Yes. And then, like, she says like, one nice thing to him, and he's just he's just cool hand, cool hand, whatever his name is, right? Like, he's just cracking jokes. And then there's that terrible, terrible scene where he's singing, <laughs> and that is also horrid. I, I'm glad I just remembered it, but it, that happens. And then at the end of the film, now you have to help me with this. She is, like, just like, living with him. What happened at the end of the film where she's like, what do you want for breakfast? And he seemed surprised like he had woken up from a coma. What had happened in the time from when the film stopped? When did they become a couple? Or was this just the morning after a night out? I didn't understand. I, I think they hooked up. I don't think it was they were yeah. a couple. I, I think that... I mean... Maybe maybe I, we... Look, you got to wait for the sequel, Baywatch 2. Okay. Maybe that uh, that'll be the big wedding. Uh, that'll get destroyed. I'm pitching Baywatch 2 right now. We apparently need $65 million for this one. Yeah, a bit lot, tougher. We can do it. We can do it. We can get it. A lot bigger budget than the other films we've pitched. Uh, but it's going to be the, the Ronnie and CJ wedding. And then, right. you know, it just all goes awry from there. Uh, I think it was just, you know, they had the big adrenaline from the night before. They saved the world. They saved the beach, whatever they saved. Um, yeah, they, that's what I did. <laughs> They went back, uh, you hook up as you do after a, a night of saving the world and the beach. And then the next morning, you know, he was he was so high off of that from the previous night, he, he couldn't believe it the next morning when he woke up. He's like, man, I, I actually, I, I, I slept with this woman who I had a crush on. And yes. so he was very excited. He does a little dance and stuff and they, it, yeah. they have a great relationship. She's like, I saw that. It's like, ha ha ha. You know, they're, they're very cute together. I think that's yeah. what happened in this show. I wondered if he'd like, I just didn't, I had no idea he just wakes up and it's like happening. I, I, I thought I'd miss scenes. I didn't rewind to find out if I had, I, you know, I just, <laughs> it felt like there was, um, with with that dynamic, and then the one with the with the other lady with with Efron, uh, where there is another dick joke which I can't recall. But oh, there was there it. was dick and boob jokes between them okay. because Zach Efron, um, I don't, oh. know, I think her name's Summer in the film, uh, but it's Alexandra Daddario, and Zach Efron is always staring at her boobs, and then at the end of the film, she's staring at his dick, and yeah, yeah the the yeah. sexual and tension it, there, Joe. Well, you missed, the, you know. Look, I don't want to, I don't want to give him too much credit, here, but there were <laughs> details you left out. So, when he stares at the boobs, she says, "Are you staring at my boobs?" And he says, 
No. And then he stares because she has brought up her boats. That's you're correct. I'm and right she's jumping, far. and she, she's yes. jumping in front of him as well. Yeah, that, yeah, that happens after, and then, and then at the end, as a way to symbolise that they have come full circle as a budding uh, couple, I assume, or whatever they are. I don't want to assume anything, in fact. <laughs> However, then to go the whole way opposite direction, the tables are turned. She stares at the dick, and he says, "Oh." You stare at my dick now, I believe was his was his quote. And she says something that I can't recall. And I think I was supposed to laugh, <laughs> smile, grin, cheer, erupt in celebration that she was staring at his dick. Don't know what I was supposed to think. Right? <laughs> but I did want to make clear there was more dick humour here. What dynamic uh, with the, the CJ and the Heart Kid and the, the Efron and the, that deal, which is worse in this film, in your opinion? Uh, the, the Efron and the Dario dynamic yeah. is, is is far worse because it just takes up time that's really what all it is right it's it, just more screen it's really just even the the first meeting is like she walks by and efron is just like she's hot <laughs> gonna try to bang her like that's that's the whole thing at least there's something between ronnie and cj yeah. of like he seems a little stalkerish maybe uh but there's there's at least a little bit more there's more layers there i'm not saying how many more layers it's literally only like one but at least that's one more than the other couple yes i mean unfortunately she just uh summer do you say the name was i believe Everall. so yeah unfortunately i mentioned her, her she just doesn't have a character in this film she's just the girl that everyone wants to get with and he uses binoculars to creep on which is um just another winning scene. Just another <laughs> one of those scenes you go, well, I really love the guys that are in this film. You know, and Rock stops him. Rock is, um, Rock, is he good in this? You mentioned earlier. Is it good? He is good at being bad, I think was your conclusion. Is that what you said? He is good at doing roles that can't allow him to be I good. Think, I think The Rock is just good at being The Rock. That's the conclusion. Well, I feel like The Rock was more fun than this guy now. You know? I'm sorry. Listen. <laughs> Listen, DJ. I'm sorry. I don't mean to, I don't mean to be a critic here. I'm a fan. I think always will be. I think he's kind of lame. I think you've got the nostalgia glasses on with The Rock because yeah, The Rock's sucks. character it was just a bunch of a bunch of dick jokes mm -hmm. and whatnot. Maybe and that, that's what The Rock was. Yeah, but yeah. like the dick jokes were. I'm not going to say they were funny. Certainly not. But they were so like, over the top that a child may laugh. He never was just like big dick. <laughs> Like he would at least like say words in a colourful fashion. I don't know. I can't believe we've ended up here. I've got nothing left. I don't know. It was just a lot of dick talk and there was there was actual dick and I don't know guys. I actually tried to keep this show relatively clean. And I can confirm I failed in that mission this evening. But look, that Baywatch did it to me. Don't blame me. I think I immediately threw it off the rails when your nickname for this show was Big Dick yes, Joe Holbert. I agree. Stuff. I wasn't sure if we were even going to tackle it, to be honest. But as soon as you went there, I was like, well, let's just get Look, this. you've got to tackle it when it's that big, all right? You, you've got to. You just do. <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean, it was one of the central themes of the film, wasn't yes. it, really? So you can't really ignore it if you wanted to treat the film with respect and discuss it in detail. You've really got to get into the dick, I guess, right? That's just the way it is. Look, hands up. We did our job as reviewers, Jeremy. <laughs> That's all we do here. We cover the films. We have integrity. And today we spoke about Dick. Uh, did the David Hasselhoff and Pamela Anderson cameos do anything for you? No. Okay. Um, no, they didn't. Uh, the the mini interaction with the Rock and the Hoff, where they you know they are both Mitch, was funny. If you compare it to everything else in this film, <laughs> you may laugh at that. Um, you know, but generally speaking, no. And Pam Anderson's at the end, right? Doesn't she? Yeah. What happened to her? I, she, she just sort of, she's introduced by Rock at the end, and that's the end of the film. She's yeah. on the screen for like five seconds, correct? I'm not making this up. And it's slow mo, and they make the joke about why she always yeah. in slow mo. Yeah. There's another one of those jokes, right? Don't they do the same joke for um, the, the, you know, the new, the new, the, the, the one we just like CJ, the new yeah. CJ. Yes. They do the same thing, right, about the why always in slow-mo. Hilarious. <laughs> That's great. Uh, I loved it. Any, anything else? From Clearly this? not. <laughs> oh, oh wait, 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 wait. Uh, I do have um, one more thing. I do have one more thing. 
So the the opening scene, I guess the second scene, right after The Rock is praised for his big dick, he goes on the, the basketball court and he blocks the shot. It's Arian Foster and Vernon Davis playing yeah. basketball. Two football. Does The Rock not have basketball friends that he could have had for this scene? This bugged me. This really bugged me. Yeah, um... So, like, they're playing and he just... <laughs> he comes out like, of he, nowhere. He, he LeBron yeah. James him. You know, blocked yeah, he, by Dwayne. He's doing his thing and then it just cuts to, like, a basketball game. Yeah. And he just appears to block a shot. Right? That's what happens? Yes. There's nothing... And then when he walks off, they say something about how cool he is or something. I don't know. I, yeah. I forget. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, you know, that you don't have to ask DJ about that when he when he tells you to keep killing it, JL. <laughs> Maybe he'll help on that. Maybe it was the wrong time of the year for it. I don't know. I don't know the situation, season-wise, you know. But you are correct. As a detailed man of this podcast, Jeremy, I can see why that would have frustrated you, especially because if it was actual basketball players, it could have somehow sparked some interest and discussion on this show, which would have been very, very helpful. So I understand why that's... Uh, well, that's your attention, but I have no answers, unfortunately. Who should have been cast as Arian Foster and Vernon Davis, actual basketball players? Dwayne Johnson blocking <laughs> Kyrie Irving's layup would have been one of the greatest things in the history of cinema. Um, I'm trying to think here. I don't know. I mean, it's hard, right? I don't want to. I don't want to kind of go too big, but at the same time, you got to make people smile in there. You can't just go with like Malcolm Brogdon. You know, or the, the, <laughs> I don't know. Who, who are you thinking? I like your Kyrie suggestion. I I think Kyrie should have played. I think Arian Foster gets his uh shot blocked in the film. Yes. So you've got Kyrie as the ball handler, and you need like a a halfway decent, like kind of stocky. All right, here you go, Joe. You're gonna yell at me for this one, but I'm gonna tell you who it should be. Al Horford should have been the that. other person. <laughs> Fine, I'm not. I'm not reacting. I look, guys. I love Al. Many times I come on this podcast wearing shirts that celebrate Al. We all get old, unfortunately. You know, in 20 years, this podcast will not be the same. The dick jokes will have fell apart by then. I'm being honest with you. Okay, we all get old. It's happened to Al. Unfortunately, it just so happens that my franchise has decided to pay him a lot of money in this time as he gets old. But you look, you win some, you lose some. In our case, you lose a lot of them. But um, I still like Al, and it would have been nice to see him in this film. It would have been uh, very however, fitting. he's a lot taller than Dwayne, and he would never get in the film for that reason. Right? Let's be honest. It would have been very fitting to watch Al Horford, somebody blow by Horford, and then uh, <laughs> uh, the center has to clean up and block the shot at the rim. That, that would have been very fitting. I mean, that's your t- my take would have been <laughs> he knew Dwayne was there. He guided him to Dwayne so he could be on the fast break. That's my take. But, okay. you know, he's a leader. He sees things. <laughs> Beyond just the one-on-one matchup. Fair enough, you know. Not every, he's not for everyone, right? Not for everyone. He funneled funneled him right into the rim yep, protection. Exactly. That's fair. He knew he was doing. He yeah. knew he was doing. <laughs> Appreciate our hope for guys. One more. Look, makes he takes a good shot, passes, great shot. We know this. If there's anyone out there that listens to our podcast that understands that joke beyond it just being funny as words, uh, I was going to say tweet me. You can no longer do that, I guess. Do something. Tweet Jeremy that I'm very good. Carry on. <laughs> Uh, what is your your rating for this film, Joseph? I don't want to start a precedent by giving a zero, so I'm going to give it a one. A one, Jeremy. An actual one. Disgraceful. D- that is a disgraceful rating. I agree. Yes. I agree with you. Um, okay. I'm not going to give it a one star or half a star or anything like that because it would just be incorrect. And, and I'm not here to lie to the people like you are, Joe. This is not worse than the Marine Six. There's yes. no way this is worse than the Marine Six. Yes, it was. I did not yes. go on a 10-minute a just laughing fit for, for the Marine Six. Okay? Yeah. For that sure. and for that alone, I'm gonna get I'm gonna put this like my tastes are obviously much different. This is better than the main event for me. Uh, and yeah. I gave I gave the main event two stars. I'm going to go two and a quarter for this film. Look, the first 40 minutes of this film, fantastic. Great film. <laughs> then it just kind of falls off a cliff. So I'm going two and a quarter. That's probably a little generous. But yeah. I did think the ending helped it a little bit too 
when the rock shot that lady with a with a bazooka and it was a big fireworks show i thought that helped it as well so i'm going two and a quarter that's fine but it's not the worst film as far as what's actually the content of the film no it is not but man it is just a lifeless soulless disgrace to cinema and that's worse in my view but yeah look different views that's what this podcast is all about right jeremy we, we always bring hard-hitting movie debate to fight for that's what i'm proud of but yeah are you ready to find out my selection for next week yes what will we be reviewing next week okay so i had a list of candidates for this and i was going for pure evil i was going for the most kind of strenuous adventure for you as a viewer until sunday night when my king my hero randall alton decided that he was going to remind everyone that he is not only one half of the greatest wrestling match ever he is the greatest wrestler ever fact confirmed randy <laughs> said it himself i've said it for years it's over with folks delete your spreadsheets he's won okay so for that reason in tribute to randall alton and as a preview of randy alton week which is coming anytime soon when i can <laughs> convince jeremy to do it we will be watching 12 rounds to reloaded starring the greatest wrestler ever the ultimate victor in all wrestling debate and conversation the leg slap king randy Orton. thank you very much everyone i'm looking forward to it too i i'm excited for this i've never seen have you seen this film yeah. no okay. i have not i'm gonna watch it five times over the next week <laughs> i've i've seen 12 rounds with john i did i legitimately did not know they made a second one and that randy Orton starred in it so <laughs> this should be fascinating i'm hoping you know we always like when in these films wrestlers do their move i don't want to oh my god I want him to do like the stomp thing in an action scene. Like in the middle of the scene, he just grabs a guy's head and is like, okay, stomp the legs, walks around, and starts getting heat on someone. That's what I would like. I, I, hope he does, I hope he does the overdrive. That would be a callback, oh, right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, okay look. Well, this is going to be fun. I'm pretty sure, based on the research I've done, it's a very bad film. I'm going to be honest. It seems like uh, Randy's great at many things. I can't see him being a great actor, to be quite honest, at this time in his life especially. However, I go with optimism because guess what? I didn't know he could have the greatest wrestling match ever. And he did that, did he not? Spreadsheets ticked. <laughs> Oscars, we're coming for you next. <laughs> next week, folks. Randy Orton. Randy Orton, 12 rounds, two reloaded. I guess that's what it's called. Reloaded. Reloaded. They... Sir. <laughs> we're reloading on you 12 rounds how about now you thought it was good with john's how about randy alton for you the greatest wrestler ever john cena does not have that title he Get has a out. lot of titles he does not have the great the title of the greatest wrestler ever Thanks. um anything else joseph before we wrap this up no um Please tell Jeremy you want Randy Orton week on the distraction. <laughs> we will do it. Okay. I, have I mean, sports. it would have to be. It would have to be like next week, right? We don't have any other Randy Orton movies to review, so we can make one. <laughs> Let's I mean, make one. I would imagine. What if we? What if we just reviewed uh, the greatest match ever? As that's yes, pretty much a, as movie, a film, right? Yeah, as a film. <laughs> this is done. This is what okay, look. <laughs> Scratch it, guys. Tell Jeremy you want Randy Orton month or <laughs> season or year. One of those three, depending. Your your mileage may vary. But just tell him he wants some Randy Orton, and I, I'm ready to bring it to you. I've been preparing for this moment my whole life. There are there are a lot of things we can do here to help Randy as he look. He's conquered wrestling now. It's time to move on. Okay, he's killing guys on Monday Night Raw every week. It's finished. We're looking at Hollywood. We're looking at music. We're looking at theater. All of the above, okay? Randy is coming for him, and we on fight. We're going to lead the charge on that. And it starts with 12 rounds to reloaded. Cena, you're out of here. Get out! <laughs> the greatest wrestler ever. One half of the greatest wrestling match ever. The greatest living artist on earth, Randall Orton. He's coming. We'll be back on Thursday to talk about wrestling. To talk about Randy Orton. Because yes. Randy Orton was involved in a lot of stuff this past week. So we're going to talk about Randy Orton. We're going to talk about anything else that has happened. I feel like stuff has happened. A lot. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they counter-programmed our, our super show last week by uh, 
giving Heyman the boot and, and putting Bruce Scrooge. in that position. Uh, just, I assume they're going to counter program us once. Oh, you know what we're definitely talking about on Thursday that I know you cannot wait for? What, Jeremy? The Street Profits and the Viking Raiders. No, yes, no, no, we're no. talking about that, that. That can be your film selection. Okay, <laughs> that that was that was not that was. Yeah, we'll talk about it then. We'll talk about it. Then. I'm not getting into it. No way. That's Thursday, our uh, actual wrestling podcast. Saturday, another um, adventure in the TEW series. If you missed this past Saturday, look, go back and watch it. But if yes. you missed it, I don't know how the timing of this worked out i really don't know how the timing of this worked out mm-hmm. bruce Pritchard was put in charge of raw and smackdown on thursday saturday in our tew series he died he did he um, died in tew and i must say that i did take the blame for this live but now that we've seen how the timeline <laughs> panned out i actually think i'm no longer to blame i really do think so i'll make it clear now the T by the time we realize what's happened in the tew world It'll be like 40 episodes later. So just know, if you watch both, that I no longer take blame for that pain of sound. <laughs> we know now who is to blame, and we do not co-sign or agree with it. But yes, RIP Bruce, of course. It's They they counter-programmed, again, they, they know what's happening. They've hacked uh, our computers here at The Distraction. They knew he was going to die in the series, and they were like, you know what? Instead of this death being a story, this real story is going to be he just has control of all of this and so they just took that away from us as as they want to do uh we have a new episode of the tew series this saturday and yeah i think that's everything you can't follow joseph on twitter anymore he he's he's given up which is good he needs to it's it's not a healthy place (laughs) retired i have retired again folks yes i quit terry funk has quit again (laughs) he's out of here uh you can follow me on twitter if you have any messages to pass along to joseph i would gladly do that for you uh check out fightful.com sign up to fightful select i've been told i don't know if this is true i'm fighting against it if we have if we hit 750 subscribers on fightful select we have to sing judas joseph do you know about this no i do not know about this but i will be demanding a serious increase in monetary gain okay (laughs) Uh, he's not saying there's been there's been oh, i know that my look right now fits such a thing but he's not in my plans currently so yes i guess don't subscribe is our point now is that what we're saying now i don't know is our point changed here cancel your it's subscription if you if you get out it. of there dm me friend. you can't dm me dm jeremy <laughs> don't do that actually subscribe um it's please please subscribe to fightful select but yeah apparently if we hit 750 uh we're we're we've been chosen to sing judas so we'll, we'll see how that goes we got we got to do something to go we're not going to be john jones in this situation no. okay sean's just not going to be like hey you take it these guys these guys they just didn't want to sing all right they they didn't want to they didn't want to do their podcast anymore they just they decided they didn't want to do it that's not how it works all right you're not going to john jones us we'll True. sit down at the negotiation table if we're going to have to sing this judas song and we'll come to an agreement all right I agree. we're playing hardball here That's right. we're, we're doing this we're professionals clearly by this hour of audio <laughs> we are pros and we will be treated as such good call i'm with you uh we'll be back on thursday with a new show we'll talk to everybody then